Phil Beskid, I'm a professor of media production and I'm an advisor for the student radio stations at BGSU. Awesome Audio is my YouTube channel. Uh, I like to post different things like educational items about uh, audio education basically, um, facts about audio production, audio engineering, um, but it's also a spot that I put um, submissions from student assignments uh, for future reference and as like examples for projects in my classes. And it's also just an opportunity for me to, uh, I guess, post and be creative with whatever else I think sort of fits the mold. It started as, uh, well, I think I could be one of those guys that creates like online coursework and like charges a few bucks for it or whatever, because I already do that stuff, you know, in the professional sense, um, but in a more formalized situation. Then Awesome Audio was sort of the creation of, oh, well, if I'm going to do online coursework in some different form, then I need to have a social media following and need to have these other sorts of forms of credibility. So I was like, oh, well, I better build a YouTube channel and put some free content up there and build an audience, so to speak, and some credibility and then potentially push out some of this other coursework eventually. I kind of ignored the social media part. Uh, I don't know, I never uh, was fascinated with uh, Facebook or or any other social media platforms as they sort of like came out of the woodwork. It was never something that I really embraced. It was actually something that I sort of, uh, maybe I, I had some disdain for because it all of a sudden gave platforms to people that didn't have any expertise to just all of a sudden be part of that, that, that world, that scene. And I didn't necessarily want to, to give into that, but then I realized that I'm missing a whole bunch of opportunities. I've been exploring short form content, I guess. Um, I mean, TikTok as part of it, but also repurposing that short form content as YouTube shorts, finding it that those are the ways um, that I've been more successful in gaining subscribers is through the short content. So trying to curate better content in that way. Um, I'm trying to maybe incorporate humor and personality a little bit more into the educational aspect of the stuff that I do as well. The inspiration for trying new things comes from just exploring other content channels that are out there, right? You see somebody else doing something in a unique way, and it's like, oh, well, I could do something similar, but maybe put this sort of spin on it. Or I could take that sort of idea or that, that route of content creation, and I could maybe spin it in this educational way that I'm trying to, to, to constantly hold on to. There's not gonna be necessarily um, a huge need for a bunch of newscasters or this sort of traditional broadcast stuff that, that maybe you think about when you think of traditional TV and, and video broadcasting. Um, it's all going to be sort of independently created content and you can see you know just by looking at different YouTube channels what's possible from a couple of people as opposed to these giant teams and huge sets and large pieces of equipment and stuff. You can do a lot with very little. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that this generation of students is definitely more acclimated to this type of production work because they've had a phone that has these capabilities their entire lives, right? They grow up with this technology. But at the same time, there's some gaps that need to be filled with like, well, why am I used to seeing things this way? How do I accomplish this particular thing? Why is cutting or editing in this particular way more effective and engaging to your audience? So it's really the, um, the skills or the concepts are, are still there. They've just evolved to the point where it's more of an analysis of what works and what doesn't work and why are things, why are pieces of content so short? And how quickly do you have to get to the point? And how important are thumbnails? Uh, all that kind of different stuff that sort of evolved with um, the change from traditional broadcast content to more content creation online. It's gonna sound really cheesy, but it's been great to get students involved with this stuff. So I have students that contact me and say like, hey, are we gonna do another awesome audio podcast? Like that was really fun or something. So that's like where uh, the payoff sort of is right now because it's not a channel that's monetized or really bringing in any extra financial situation for me. So it's more about sort of reinforcing what I'm already doing um, and making sure that students realize that, that they should be doing the same kind of thing. Like if I can do like what, what is happening here, you should certainly be using the, the skills and the concepts that we teach in like the classroom to be doing this type of stuff also. I'm Phil Beskid, AKA Awesome Audio. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's absolutely crucial. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no question about it.